the ACME team really worked closely with um, Marshmallow Laser Feast in making, um, I guess, more immersion possible or really trying to um, work across the the gallery um, with the onboarding, definitely. Um, I know we know that unlike um, these kinds of experiences outside of museums, um, here it's really important that we, we're striving for audience outcomes is what I'm trying to say. So I think other sorts of organizations that are doing these sorts of things might not be there might not be text or explainers or interpretation or that kind of scaffolding um but because we're a museum we really want to um leave people with the right sorts of uh, messages and feelings and improve their lives um so i think most importantly for these kinds of works we need to make sure that we're letting people have time with the works so that they can really make sense of them um and so the design is is really important um so the onboarding um and also kind of cutting off sight lines which might seem quite counterintuitive but trying to kind of give people time with each of the works and not wanting to be tempted to go into um onto the next thing to really take it slowly um so i think so far the feedback has been really brilliant in terms of keeping people um in that kind of slow zone and um and breathing and all of that so i think yeah it's um it's been a really interesting process to work on just getting back to what you were saying earlier and i think kerry also said it that this is the first large-scale museum exhibition that you have done could you just talk a little bit about your process compared to other presentations and what do you think um acme being a museum has brought to the experience oh loads i mean obviously the so because of our engagement with the virtual reality which we take it as a master medium in pretty much all projects even if they manifest themselves as a screen-based immersive um, uh, installation it starts from this 360 world building designing point of view and often starts and ends there you know the filmic terms since we're in a cinema making loads of uh, really good titles and a short film and then and a good uh, credit afterwards but obviously Acme bringing this expertise of how you create a 90 minute exhibition and the works themselves, you know, it could be, we could put in any order. Luckily they put in an order that made a perfect sense and, and, and utilizing some of the, um, the, 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 the poetry and then doing magnificent work with the, 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 the poetry that we gave rewriting and then just building this this narrative across the board so this practice of um i guess two things as an artist letting go because and this letting go is not from a strange place because we occupy multiple worlds as as a collective um, you know exhibiting in an architectural biennale one week going to film festival the week after and then a new media conference the week after because of the the this emergent fields every possible creative inquiry claims ownership over the media that we play with and therefore they embrace us and it's it's wonderful to go those places but every setting is different and every um every organization you you engage with is different and therefore we try to kind of you know come up with very um very definitive um tech writers and how the experience should be experienced and how do you create the we've got a, a dozen um script for every piece that we've ever uh, made that goes with it but obviously working with a museum has already got this in their practice like that was the the, the most incredible part it's like right guys actually let go we got this sorted we know how we do this and beautifully taking those creating a, a feature length experience with the, the the care of the visitor experience um, staff right at the beginning all the way to the end and then obviously for the ones who's, uh, who's seen the piece you know building in a way where you descend into the soil with a breathing rhythm that try to kind of you know condition you a little bit to breathe with that rhythm right at the beginning with the, the staircase the sounds are coming from the amazonian rainforest that we recorded in 2020 the there is this really strange cognitive um, flow advantage 
when we feel and hear bird songs, it's safe. Mm-hmm. And and it actually feels there. If the birds are not, you know, tweeting, you know another predator around. And it's really interesting feeling and that, that was our feeling being in the Amazon. So we wanted to bring that in and that just, you know, starts from the, the, the beginning where you feel comfortable, you just hit the breathing rhythm and then you can read some of the poetry. It's not trying to say so much other than the things that you already know about breath and how it connects you to the living world. And then taking into the all the parts. And then the last part, obviously, the, the bit that we couldn't ever put it on our uh, tech rider uh, elevator that you know takes you back into the the soil line at the at the exit uh, which is quite fascinating obviously those are some of the you know architectural details of how you do this but the you know bringing the the, the technical expertise the narrative expertise and and running exhibitions with public in such scale uh, changes our tendencies and, 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 and we expand some of these pieces. So Evolver, for instance, the piece that has the, the journey of breath, the breathing cells, the, the beating heart and the Evolver virtual reality is actually a single piece that was conceived as a virtual reality piece that we launched uh, two years ago in uh, Tribeca Film Festival. But because of this dialogue with the Akmi's curatorial team and design team and technical team, we managed to pull the virtual reality out of that VR headset, which is the main f- friction point for us. You know, how many people you can really get through. I, in one hand, genuinely want this work to be impactful, communicate the themes that we want to, but if you can only show it to six people every hour, how much of an impact you can really have. So you know, working with the museum design team and the curatorial team, expanding that into a space where how do you maintain attention throughout that space? How do you stay true to the the, the source of the, the 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 actual virtual reality piece where when you stand in the middle of your lungs, look up, which no one does normally, you know. Um, it looks like massive trees. And that's the virtual reality experience, finding these very simple similarities between the living world out there and the, the, the world and the ecosystem in us. Those two screens, you know, spreading across. When you stand in the middle, you see the, the left and the right lungs filling with the oxygenated air. And you follow that into a single cell, which you lie on your back and experience this embryo taking its first breath. And you realize who's breathing who. Like I breathe exactly like that cell. So being able to take those themes and expanding into space to create a collective experience, I think the 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 most exciting part for us and the, the best outcome of this collaborative process that we had with Acme.